uh, he said, uh, I'm done. I quit. So you got to find him and, and work on him and get him and talk him back into getting back to work, which is uh, kind of hard because he's a robot and he doesn't understand English. So you have to pull the Pentecostal hair out of his rollers. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to Upper Room Studios. This is the Road Home Podcast. And today we're here to have another conversation, uh, a, a good conversation about work and not just any work, the work of the Lord, working in the kingdom. Um, and how that looks, really, is working in your local church and what what that mm-hmm what that entails and what that involves. Uh, whether you are a big church or a small church, uh, large in number, large in building, small in building, large in people, large in uh, whatever your situation may be, uh, it takes something to make your local church work. And if you're in uh, the predicament where you are one of the people that's highly involved in some of the work, um, that you do in your church. I'm not talking about just ministry, although it all involves ministry. Uh, you know what we're talking about. You're gonna you're gonna relate to some of the things we're gonna we're gonna speak on. Uh, speaking as people who are highly involved at many levels <laughs> of from the top to the bottom, <laughs> literally, yeah, uh, making a a church function, and it has to do with like the physical things and how. Uh, how does certain things get done? Um, but with that being to start off with, let's have a scripture, Jed, reading from the psalmist David. What does he have to say? Read from Psalms. Psalms. The wonderful book of Psalms. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And that's a great saying that all us good church people love to hear said on a Sunday morning or a Wednesday night or whatever you have. And the preacher usually gets up and said, and David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And everybody gets all excited. And they said, yes, we was. But did you ever think about what it took to get to the point Mm -hmm. where David got to go? Mm. Okay. David was glad to go to the house of the Lord. But did David have to make sure that the toilets were clean? (laughs) Did David make sure the air conditioning was working? <laughs> Did David vacuum the platform? Hmm? Did David make sure that all the goldfish were stocked in the Sunday school rooms? <laughs> <laughs> did David did David wash the windows? Did David make sure that all the hymnals were facing the correct way? Did David, David get a bottle of water for the preacher? Did, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's a ministry. <laughs> did, did David did David make sure that, you know, there were no bobby pins loose somewhere in the carpet that was going to hang David up? Did David make sure all the bugs were cleaned out of the baptistry? Yeah. That's, see? <laughs> or the toilet paper stocked. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's that's a ministry. And shout out all the diapers all the... are out of the nursery. <laughs> These are all little things that maybe, you know, just, you know, God bless everybody that comes to church, but maybe just, you know, you just show up to church. Uh, You don't think about. Oh, I got one. Okay. This more deals with where I used to be because this was one of my (laughs) ministries. Making sure that the snow removal and and that the uh, sidewalks had salt on them. Yeah. Okay. That's that's, that is a northern thing. Yeah. Uh, also, a southern thing. Whenever it snows, ever ever ten years. Yeah, we had to show up. We had to show up <laughs> early to get the plowing. The we fortunately, after a while, we had somebody in the church that had a truck with mm. a plow on it. But otherwise, we'd had to show up early with a snowblower, and it was, and that would be pretty wild. In Wisconsin, that'd be like what? How cold would it be anyway? Oh, and the negatives. Yeah. Oh. So, and it's kind of, it wouldn't be in like. Us still going out here just waiting for it to melt. No, it right. snows no. down here. We cancel church. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because everybody knows. The roads don't get cleared off very fast. Yeah. And for some of us, you know, sometimes, you know, for me, you know, you've been to church a lot. And, like, I've missed very, very, very few times. So it's kind of like, you know, a snow day for school. <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> like, like in the wintertime, oh, we're going to cancel church. <laughs> 
Only whenever it's a little stressful. But a lot of times if it happens more than once in a blue moon, it's kind of like, it's a bummer. But, you know, that's one of those, like, up in Wisconsin, that was like a, I'm sure it was a, a more common thing yeah. than that. Uh, down here, if it snowed, there have been a few times we have had to come and make sure the parking lot was all salted and cleared. But that'd be few and far between because it yeah. But it wasn't like, because like the uh, way that the church sat, it sometimes they get, foot to two foot snow drifts in the mm-hmm. back so yeah you know they'd clear the streets obviously so you could get to church but then we had to be responsible for them parking right so, right with two foot you know in the back of the church yeah they, you can't park in two foot of snow speaking of parking parking is a ministry there have been several people who like that's their calling they're good at that they can park people in the right places and you know especially if you get a lot of people at church mm-hmm. and your parking lot is really tight mm-hmm. especially a small church um, you've got to have somebody show them where to go. And I remember there was a brother, Brother Bobby. He used to be the man. He would tell people where to park. you show up at church, he'd say, there you go. Right over here, we'll find your spot right up here. And he'd take you right to where you're supposed to go. After church, he'd be the first one out there showing everybody where to get out. So the, the little jigsaw puzzle would be, you know, because you don't have like, you know, that was, we didn't have no uh, lines, or flags. lines or flags yeah. or somebody going around directing traffic it was just brother bobby telling people where to park and how to how to get out when they got done and it you know it worked but that was that was a ministry and you don't think about certain things like that it just doesn't happen it takes a lot of you work you sure david yeah. wasn't trying to park camels david may have been out <laughs> parking camels david may have been he, i don't know david, david had a lot of ministries david was a here's the thing about david David was a musician, and I can speak as a musician. David wasn't thinking about some of these things. Yeah. Okay. He was just wanting to play some music and worship God and go to dancing. Uh, no, he was not thinking about the camels and the and the toilet paper. He was and the playing goldfish and the nursery. That's why everyone else was yeah. doing everything. And- yeah. I can, I can uh, relate to that a little bit. My God. <laughs> I feel a little cold. Out. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I, I, I do. I do my fair share, but yeah, no. Sometimes I will be found. Cleaning bathrooms uh, on Sunday away. morning, and the music is blasting. Keep yeah, the worship. Yeah, warmed up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Like a, <laughs> you got to get uh, get your pump up music. But yeah. yeah, but that's that's also part of you know, make sure you kind of know what you're doing before you do it right. out in front of everybody, and you know God and everybody. Yeah, <laughs> you right. gotta you gotta kind of know what you're doing, and that's why you do what you do. But it doesn't just happen. Like it, you don't just like oh, it don't just happen. It. It takes a lot of elements, a lot of people, a lot of prayer, a lot of seeking God. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe not so much prayer to, you know, make sure that the bathrooms have toilet paper. But it definitely takes... Well, you'll be doing some praying if they don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Pray somebody can see it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or like, okay, we're well, at our church. This is kind of embarrassing, but... At our church, we have a timer on our the light in the oh, bathroom, yeah. <laughs> and unless some it's motion sense, the light so, goes off. It's time to get out. Yeah, you've been in there too long, brother. It's time to get out. Yeah, it's time to come out from among them. Toilets, and, and if you're in a stall, that thing has a hard time picking up. Too, yeah, so it's kind of scary. You speak from experience? No, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying anyway, I don't have drink. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, people come in there thinking you're doing the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Your hands are up above the. <laughs> I'm trying to get stall. the lights to come on. Oh my goodness! But anyway, all yeah, right. It, anyway, it doesn't just happen. It takes work. It takes some some actual actions of making something happen. It doesn't just fall into place. Oh, maybe you know if you okay if you want excellence, which is what we strive for here at our church and in everything we do with podcasts or ministries, everything we do. We strive for excellence, and in that, it requires a little bit of initiative, a little bit of a work, a little yeah. bit of, uh, you know, some work ethic that says, hey, uh, this has got to get done. Nobody else can do it. I'm going to do it. I'll do it. I'll see it needs done. I'll do it. You know, the floor needs sweeping. Uh, you do it. Uh, you find your little robot vacuum that we have here in church. You find him belly up over in a corner because he, he got so <laughs> overwhelmed because there's too many children <laughs> running around yeah. making crumbs after Sunday school. Uh, he said, uh I'm done. I quit. So you got to find him and and work on him and get him and talk him back into getting back to work, which is uh, kind of hard because he's a robot and he doesn't understand English. So you have to pull the Pentecostal hair out of his rollers and make sure that he works again. And and that is that is that's a little comical, but it's a ministry. It doesn't 
it may not be like everybody's cup of tea. Somebody's got to do it. Mm-hmm. Somebody's got, it doesn't just happen. You don't just come into a clean church. You don't just come into an, a cool church, you know, mm-hmm. or a warm church in the wintertime. It doesn't, the, the climate does not just happen. It, there's some there's something that has to happen like that air condition needs to be at the right temperature sometimes it gets a little too cold around here and then you have uh the blanket ministry <laughs> <laughs> like suddenly everybody wants a prayer blanket i don't know why but um no you got you got to have you got to have the, the things that require uh, the, their details not it's not necessary that to do that to worship god i mean in different countries uh all around the world haiti the philippines China, everywhere. There are many places they don't even have some of the blessings we, and they don't need that to have church to worship God. Right. But, you know, we've been blessed with the things we've been blessed with, and we want to take care of what God has given us, and we want it to function and work correctly. That being said, there are little tedious tasks that have to be done by people that, you know, maybe you don't want to do, but make that part of your worship, you know? Mm-hmm. And if you are looking at, I want to, I want to, I want to be a minister. Let me tell you, first minister unto your church, and then you'll be able to minister unto your church. Mm-hmm. That's the truth. Um, when you when you learn that you can, you it's okay. You can you can clean your toilet. You can mow your church's yard. You can you can do a lot of things. You can minister to God's house before you can minister to the people that come and worship in it. Yeah, and um. If you want to grow in God, you'll you'll learn that a lot of times God allows us to grow in those moments where we are at our most humble. <laughs> mm-hmm. And one of those humble moments would be, you know, um, maybe you need to paint a room. Maybe you need to, um, you know, build something for your church. Maybe some, like the skills that are in a local church, they're so key. Mm-hmm. If you have somebody who's a carpenter and they are in your local church and you know they're good carpenter, utilize them. Yeah. You know, uh, if you have someone who's talented and skilled in art, you know, and you have a, you know, a vacation Bible school going on, utilize those talents. <laughs> if you have someone. I was thinking about like, Zach. Yeah. Yeah. We need oh, to share yeah. that story real yeah. quick. Okay. So. <laughs> Maybe you'd be good. It is your brother, so tell that story. <laughs> so we hadn't been very long in Kentucky. Yeah. And my brother Zach, um, he's hey, Zach. A, he's a really good artist. I mean, really good artist. And was it Emily? Was it you that asked him, said, said I need you to draw a whale? And just just like that, a whale. Yeah, because we have a, a slight southern drawl. Yeah. And so a whale is a whale. So Zach draws a, a whale in the ocean. W H A L did a really good job. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Got it all finished. I don't know how long you worked on it. It was pretty. Brought it to Emily and she <laughs> said, No, I said a whale. <laughs> <laughs> a W E L L. One that you take a bucket yeah. down and get you some water. Yeah. So there was a miscommunication. A, a whale. But yeah. both pictures were beautiful. Yeah, yeah he did a he good did job. He did such a good them. job. And, he just and it was over and drew only in the center. And it was so good. It looked so good. I think we got that laying around somewhere. It's probably we? somewhere around yeah. here in one of the little crevices we had things. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, but we utilize that. You yeah. find, hey, that's a talent. That's mm-hmm. a skill. Yeah. Uh, we talked about everybody has different skills a few weeks ago. I mean, he he utilized his skills. He may not have been had the community. Our communication skills may have been off. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, you know. It did make sense that, you know, it'd be a whale. A whale. But uh, <laughs> a whale can go either way. <laughs> <laughs> In Kentucky, a whale can be many different you, things. You got to use context clues. Yeah, context clues are key. Yeah. Uh, but that's just one of those talents and skills. You need to utilize those talents and abilities. If you have skills, a talents and abilities, if you're a good singer, if you are a musician, if you are a I mean, an electrician. If you're a painter, if you know how to finish drywall, if you know how to, uh, I don't know, sew. There, years ago, there was a lady in church. She knew how to cr- crochet. So they utilized her skills, and all the ladies would have a crochet class, and they would pray over the little animals or uh, 
pillows and things they would make in the crochet blankets. and blankets, little shawls, whatever. And they would pray over them and made it a, a, like a prayer blanket ministry using that. And that was, you know, that was somebody using their talents and skills. Yeah. Those, those, those little things are cool. Mm-hmm. Those little things are cool. That, but that's just no, that's like, okay, God sees your abilities and talents. He's placed you somewhere. Don't go around saying, everybody needs to use me because I've got a talent and a skill. No, you just, you know, properly, properly go through the channels. Mm-hmm. Um, if you know, somebody needs something, you be the one who's able to give them what they need. Yeah. You know, and sometimes, um, like, especially if you've got a small church, mm-hmm. they need something done, but sometimes they don't have somebody to do that. Right. So then it's like you put in the time to learn how to do that. Mm-hmm. So I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we looked at Jed because yeah. Jed's been like uh, the guy we've turned and looked to and he's like, I don't know how to do it. I'll find out. Yeah. Uh, whether it be a 2020 live stream pandemic style. Um, that was terrible. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how do I get this port to work for my amplifier to come through? The how do I make our sound work better? How do I do that? And how many trial and errors did we come up with, Jed? A lot. And there was more errors than anything. Yeah. <laughs> but we were learning. And some of them are still up on Facebook. Yeah, I, th- I think actually on think our, our Easter service was it? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> There's actually a YouTube video out there where our sound system blew up. Oh, I don't remember that one. Mid, yeah. mid uh, service there. We were like. That was terrible. Our amplifier blew up. Yeah, amplifier yeah. blew up. And it was like just right in the middle of the, the live stream. I tell you though, when once you're, once you're always trying to learn something to help out your church, it's very hard when you go to someone else's church and something happens. You you almost go into a panic mode. Like, yeah. what am I supposed to be doing? I'm supposed to be troubleshooting something right now. Right. <laughs> And uh, I, I, it's it's like okay, I, I'm, I just need to sit here. To, I know what needs to be done. Yeah. Oh no. Oh, yeah. I know. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. You, so like, you go to some different churches, and you 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 feel the pain they're yeah, feeling. Exactly. Yeah. You know when something's going wrong. Yeah. And when something's not quite right up on the screen, it's like <laughs> they haven't switched slides in about ten minutes. Something's froze up. <laughs> yeah. They you they're know? still in the same scripture. <laughs> yeah. But it, it doesn't. It doesn't mean like okay, you are like hyper. Everything has to right. be perfect. It's that you have a a zeal and a desire for things to be excellent. Right. And in that, we give you know you give place for God to lead, and and everything doesn't have to be perfect, and we all realize that. But like, if you are you you want to please God, and you want it to be presentable, and you want to honor God with that talent skill you have Mm -hmm. like especially with music like it's kind of like when you like i'll be playing and then i'll hear that off note yeah it drives me nuts it's not because it's it's a little bit of perfectionism i understand that but it is also it's like but no one else probably heard it probably not but i wanted i wanted that to be good right Mm -hmm. not just so everybody hey everybody check out how good i can play no I, i want it to i want it i don't want anything to take away from, you want the service to flow. Exactly. You want it to flow better. I, I want everyone to be welcome to worship God yeah. and to uh, encourage worship rather than distract from. Yeah. And a lot of these things that people add on, you know, that makes it more tedious on whoever is working in the church, like maybe smoke machines or uh, <laughs> extra lighting. Lord, let's not have those, lasers. <laughs> uh, whatever you want to use. I'm, I'm not a big smoke machine fan. But, you know, I did see some purple lights I liked one time, though. Them was pretty cool. But anyway, um, whatever you're going to do, do it with excellence. Mm-hmm. If it ain't going to work, I'm one of those people, if it's not going to work, let's not even attempt. <laughs> yeah. If it's not going to let's do what we can do excellent. And if we, if we learn how to do something better, we can do something better. This, this podcast has been so much <laughs> trial and error. Yeah. yeah. So if you've watched since the beginning, we've, we've come a long ways in, a, I believe, a short amount of time. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've learned we've learned a lot, watched a lot of YouTube videos to on how to do this. So mm-hmm. but God we, blessed it. And we've also spent a lot of time just like that was horrible. <laughs> yeah. There's a <laughs> lot of throwaway episodes. Yeah, there's no telling yeah. how there many, are like there's, there's no telling how many we recorded and something wasn't working 
that we just had to yeah. throw out the whole episode because it didn't work. That happened just like last week. Yeah. And <laughs> but like okay, there there was just like hence why it might have been a little different. Than it might have, if it if it seemed off to you, it seemed way off to us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but eventually, you know, after we keep doing this and keep doing it, and keep doing it, pressing on, pressing on, then it's gonna be it's gonna be really great. So. Yeah. I've. I'm not going to say that, like, I don't freak out sometimes, but, like, I have learned that, okay, if it doesn't work, let's try something else. Yeah. Like, and to quick adaptability. And that's a part of, like, if you're going to do kingdom work, you're going to do work in, in the church, you need to be flexible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You need to be flexible. You need to be like a rubber band on a porch swing. You need to just be laying there, just ready to go. You need to be just so God can stretch you, and your pastor can stretch you, and whoever you're under can stretch you. <laughs> What's a rubber band on a porch swing? <laughs> I made it up. Off the top of my head. <laughs> it works. I was trying to figure it out in my head, and yeah, I couldn't. I, a, a mental picture. You need to. You want to come check my mind out? I got issues. But well, anyway, you need to be more flexible. You know, I, see, you need to be more flexible. Yeah. Your analogies too. Uh, <laughs> if you get, <laughs> that didn't make no sense. No, you need to be flexible if you're going to work for for the Lord. Imagine, okay. Imagine somebody comes to you. I've done this to Jed, and Jed's flexible with this. Like, okay, um, you got a message. You you're going to preach. I've got this. Oh, Jed, can I have this certain yeah. thing? Can you put this thing? And it was like, hang on. It'd be like five minutes before church starts or less. Just got to roll with it. Which is and a lot of times. Most, most of the times. Possible. Yeah. <laughs> you got to go with it and you got to make it work. Or if you find out that, you know, vacation Bible school is just like a week away and we barely have anything done. <laughs> There's been no play. And then you end up writing a play. Um <laughs> A puppet show. We do that stuff to ourselves, though, uh, because we want it. it. We want it to look good, so we do all that stuff to ourselves. Building yeah, a but submarine. We shouldn't wait till the last minute to start procrastination. Playing. Yeah, procrastination. But we we get those. Oh, hey, this would look cool. Wouldn't that be so neat to have a waterfall on the on the wall on the wall? So we find a projector in the sound room and get an old laptop and I've got spend about ten hours trying to figure <laughs> out how to transfer transfer a file. And Listen, folks, church people. I've got a t-shirt for you. Get ready. Imagination is the cure for procrastination. <laughs> imagination. <laughs> if you will let your imagination and a little bit of inspiration from God, especially like children's ministry and stuff, you're going to see uh, some of your procrastination go out the window. You'll be running around like a chicken with your head cut off. <laughs> Um, because like that's where a lot of work happens around here. But those little ideas that we say, oh, that would be so. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I was like, okay, we were just had our vacation Bible school, and I was like, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do that. I don't want to. Yeah, but this would be so cool. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's so got neat. it's got to have that. And then you end up doing stuff like it. You find yourself awake at one thirty in the morning doing. Stuff that uh, you wouldn't think that you in your adult life would be doing. <laughs> uh, yeah. We'll just leave that there. But um, nothing bad. <laughs> nothing bad. But yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, when you are gifted in things that you don't know nothing about, and you're like, what? God. You've how almost did, become. How did this gift come about? Huh? Yeah. Like, God, how did I get this? I didn't want this. What's huh? what's your alter ego, Angus McDougal? Ang- My name is Angus McDougal, and I'm a storyteller. But anyway, <laughs> I don't know where he came from. <laughs> That's what Micah does at one thirty in the morning. <laughs> but hey, he comes from the bottom. Of listen, the hey, but it was a it was awesome. It was it, a beautiful it was story. Awesome. It, let me say this. And it it touched. <laughs> I think it touched a lot of people. Yeah, that is one of those things where I'm like, I don't think. That didn't come from me, because I was not awake at one thirty in the morning. God was just speaking it this was little just, Irish man through yeah. you. He's actually Scottish. Don't be, oh, don't be, don't sorry, be dissing Scottish. my friends now. Don't be talking. I'm not. Uh, I, I thought hey. he was Irish. <laughs> That's how cultural in America uh, we're not very cultural diverse. Okay. <laughs> so work in the kingdom. If you so, work back to it. If yeah. you work parking the, camels. <laughs> if you work in the kingdom, 
you are going to you're going to be available yeah. if you're and you're probably already that person that's what's crazy if you're going to if you're going to be used by god you're probably already that person that's made yourself available yeah and if you're not i want you to look at the um possibilities around you look at your local church go to the bathroom this sunday check out your church's bathroom <laughs> now when you get to the bathroom, this is wisdom for you. When you get to the bathroom, don't think, oh my goodness, they have not done anything to this bathroom in 10 years. This thing needs updated. Why don't they do anything about it? You know why they haven't done anything about it? Because they is you, and you need to do something about your bathroom and your church. <laughs> Take ownership of where you worship and make it make the, make that bathroom a place of worship. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. I'm serious. Because, okay, you look at something that's been neglected. It's supposed to be a place where people can get ministered to. And you have a place in your church that has been just neglected. It's just a shambles. And you have the ability. You know how to paint. You know how to do plumbing. You know how to remodel. You've remodeled all kinds of things. You know how to decorate. You've decorated your house several times. You know how to look up things on Pinterest. You know how to find out information on YouTube. And you are complaining because they haven't done anything to their bathroom that you are using. Think about that. It's a perspective change that they, why haven't they done anything? No, this is your bathroom that you're using because you are a church member. You are someone in this church, and I'm talking to mostly my like my my, my, my small church people here. That you know your we church don't have staff. We don't. Yeah, they, they, big no. churches You're, usually have they, somebody yeah, on, on staff paid to do this kind of stuff, or or somebody yeah. hired from another company right, comes in right. and yeah. you know and they can do it because there's enough money flow. But yeah. I'm talking to my my friends who go to a church you know kind of similar to ours, and you complain that because the bathrooms are a shambles and this doesn't oh, it hasn't been updated in ten years. Do something. Don't listen. Go to your pastor. Say, Pastor, I, I love you. I appreciate your ministry. But I think I, I think we need to do something about that bathroom. You know what that pastor's probably going to say? You know what, sis, brother? Well, go for it. Yeah. Go for it. I think you're right. I've, I've been saying that for a long time. I have not had time to get to it because you know what? I've been trying to preach i've been trying to pray for i've been visiting people in the hospital i've been trying to to update things in other areas and i got to that and so you know what go ahead and that's i guarantee you you find a problem going on i'm not saying you need to get up in every situation go through the proper channels like i say <laughs> but you're going to find a way to work and to do it excellently and you will find yourself being busy mm -hmm. in the kingdom of god and You'll start out in a bathroom. You end yourself up somewhere in the pla on a platform. You'll learn <laughs> from the bathroom to yeah. the platform. Yeah. You, go. you have to learn humility, though. Yeah, to be yeah. in ministry yeah. that you're not always going to go straight to the top, and you ain't getting paid for it. Yeah, you're not getting paid. Yeah, unless you're in a big. Trip. And I would even say that there's not a top. <laughs> Your reward well, will be in heaven. Not, right. There's yeah. not a top, and um, you're not going to get praised for it. Right. No. And no. don't expect it. You right. Know, like, <laughs> Don't expect people to say, oh, you did such a good job cleaning the bathroom. Yeah. No, it's no, just, a they, lot of people don't even notice, so it's just like, oh, there's toilet paper in here. You know, no. they don't think about it until yeah. it's gone. It's kind of like our little brother one time when he was little, he was cracking open um, some peanut shells, and he was eating peanuts, and he cracked one open, and it did, it was empty. And he said, oh, man, he said, the peanut people forgot to put peanuts in this shell. Like, okay, yeah, the peanut people. There's actual <laughs> peanut people who, like, building these things in a peanut factory, making... But, like, okay, your concept. So, like, you you may look at your church that way and say, and you go to church and everything's in shambles and say, oh, man, they didn't do this or they didn't do that. Mm -hmm. Well, think about who you're talking about. You're probably talking about yourself. Yeah. So where are you? Where are you? Like, okay. I'm not saying, like, you're lazy or nothing. I'm just saying, you know, maybe you don't think about it. It doesn't just happen. Yeah. And... If it, you're going to work... Well, if you're part of the kingdom, you see a need, fill it. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. your job. Yeah. You're part of the kingdom. You know, you're not You're not a visitor. You're not no. uh, just stepping inside, you know. The, yeah. the house belongs to the Lord. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You're there to maintain it. Mm -hmm. We're there to maintain it. So treat it like your father's house. Right. Yeah. So... 
why your father's house got a broken down bathroom? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. We don't have broken down bathrooms. No, anymore, praise though. the Lord. Yeah. Praise, praise the, the Lord. Lord. He's blessed us with. Yeah. You imagine walking into a uh, Buckingham Palace and you see some trash on the floor, and, and that exactly. somebody hasn't went and picked up, or you go to the bathroom and it's it's in shambles. Yeah. So you serve a king higher than any king on this exactly. earth. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. And and it's his house, and you honor you just you just honor God, and then you have a testimony that you know people come and say, "Oh, they they have excellence here at this church," and it has nothing to do with anybody personally. Mm-hmm. It has to do with a body collective to say, oh, they have people who love God and they honor God's house. Mm. And it'll just make the atmosphere feel fresh and, you know, like uh, welcoming. Right. Mm-hmm. A welcoming, fresh atmosphere. You right. know? We've been to churches that are moldy. Yeah. And, yeah. And then maybe they've not vacuumed in a while. couple years. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. but I have been, we've, we've also been to some churches where they like, Mm, they got some nice bathrooms. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they oh, look at this carpet. This is some good carpet. Mm-hmm. Or oh, would you look at the chandeliers? And it's not say just to worship. It's like somebody cares about yeah, this place. Yep. About the people who worship, worship here, yeah. the people who love God here, the people whose lives have been changed by God by the word that was preached from this pastor here. Mm-hmm. They honor God. They honor this church. Mm-hmm. And they honor the place where people's lives can be changed. Mm-hmm. And that's, you know, there's, that's, you don't think of it being eternal, but it is. It's, it's totally eternal. And everything from, you know, driving your church van to picking up kids, you know, and. Um, Billy's done that. Billy's done Ted's that. Billy's done that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, yeah. And it's not fun when they make fun of you, is it, Jed? No. Yeah. Crazy, <laughs> mean kids. They didn't ever make fun of me. Billy was the good guy. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Did they really make fun of you, Chad? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Poor fellow. But anyway. I'm used to being made fun of, though, so. We all we all have been made fun of. It's part yeah. of. All right, so David went to parking the camels. <laughs> <laughs> David, David, David parked the camels. No, David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Why? Because you know what? When I go to the house of the Lord, it's the most richest house. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. In all of Jerusalem. It's the most beautiful house. And the people there are meek. They are happy. They are lovely. It's called the congregation of the righteous. It's not the congregation of the, the unrighteous. It's mm-hmm. it's godly people there. People that love each other. Um, there's beautiful music that honors God and worship. we worship God with it. And also, there's the presence of God there. And that was what David was drawn to and hey that's what i can just imagine because if y'all know that sunday morning feeling ah that beautiful sunday morning feeling now not every, now i'm not gonna say you feel that every sunday morning some days you gotta fight that flesh <laughs> you know you gotta you gotta keep yourself from rolling over in your bed and becoming a holy roller on sunday morning yeah. and you get up and you say oh, i gotta go to church but there are there's that you know that excitement that when i get to church there's something beautiful gonna happen mm-hmm. it, the presence of god gonna be there and that's what David said. I believe that's what David was saying. Mm-hmm. I was glad when they said, let's go to church this morning because mm-hmm. there's going to be something there for me. And it's a beautiful place with beautiful people that I'm going to get to go to heaven with. And if you guys have anything else to add? Well, like it helps when everybody does do their part and works together. Exactly. Then the atmosphere can be more free and clear, you know, for welcoming mm-hmm. for the presence of God because everybody's doing their part and we don't have any Ah, the sound's messed up, you know. <laughs> yeah. So Billy goes and takes care of that, and then <laughs> say the, you know, whatever, the music, you know, Becca gets a song lined up. Yeah. Jed's getting scriptures thrown up. Yeah. But if nobody's doing their part, it's like, ah, what are we going to do? Yeah. You, mm-hmm. you know. Right. And it it's not it's not saying that. And it makes you, know, you distracted from what need, yeah. from the presence of that. It's not saying that all these little things are more important than worship or no. prayer. It's saying that, you know, it's it's that and that. It's both yeah. and. It's not, it's part of worship. It's part of honoring God. Like, Everything working together. It's it's so, it's beautiful when it does work. Mm-hmm. And sometimes, it, sometimes it's difficult, but it's rewarding. And, you know, when you think about we're all going to heaven together. We're all one day going to a place that far more beautiful than anything down here. You have a nice house. You have a nice home. Think about God's house. Now, I understand you are God's building. I get it. But also, why do you go to a physical building to worship God with your brothers and sisters? 
It's so you can honor God in spirit and truth in a place together with them. Honor that building. Honor the people who are there. See who needs something. Ask everybody. Can I, how can I help you? Ask your children's ministry. Ask the Sunday school teachers. Do you need help? Anything you need me to do? Ask your worship team. Do y'all need water? Do y'all need something? You know, do these things. And it's going to, it's going to, it's going to, it's going to let everybody know, oh, somebody cares about my ministry. Somebody cares about what we're doing. Picking up ice when you have a, a function. Yeah, when, sure. yeah, exactly. Well, that's a whole yeah. other ministry there. When you have a, when you have a, a church picnic or a, a, you know, like a cookout or a yeah. potluck, that's big down here in the South. Uh, when you have those things and, you know, who forgot the ice? <laughs> Because we don't have an ice machine. We're a small church, not a big church. So <laughs> you've got no big ice machines. Now, I have been to some churches where they got some nice ice machines. Mm-hmm. But anyway. Yeah, commercial kitchens. <laughs> yeah. Not coveting, not, but uh, it is nice to have. Look, we had to go buy ice. But anyway. Um, what was I saying? Just uh, offering, you know. Yeah. Offering yeah. if anybody needs help. In their area of ministry, yeah. and if you don't know, just go ask your pastor, yeah. your pastor's yeah. wife, and they'll. He'll, he'll I'm know. sure they'll have a job. I guarantee yeah. you, they'll have something yes. for something. you. Yeah, that you will not get a, a blank look. No, no. Oh, like, wait, it's just oh, all taken care I, of. I, don't I have think nothing so. for you to do. Nothing to do. <laughs> <laughs> nothing to do. Yeah, I think you're gonna find. How your many hands things full. do you want to do? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what do you want? Do you? Mm. You know, we've been we've been wanting to. Yeah. We've been praying about somebody to help us. Uh, do live stream. Oh, I've never done that before. Learn. Yeah. Uh, we've been praying about somebody to learn how to play this different instrument. Um, I don't know how to do that. Well, figure it out. And if you can't do it, we'll figure it out. <laughs> It'll be pastor, all right. The pastor's children will thank you too. Yes. Yes. Because if you don't want to learn something and you're a pastor's child, you're probably going to have to learn. <laughs> <laughs> or son of mom. Okay. Yeah. Think about all of us. Yeah, okay. If you're a small church kid and you grew up in church, every one of you have been on drums at some point in your life. That's how Zach learned. Yeah. He just look, where that, look where he's at now. Look where he's at now. Yeah. With that being said, real quick, for whales and whales. <laughs> yeah. What, what was your all's first um, job for a church that wasn't like on the platform? Mm. Run the sound. I had to figure out how to hook it up. I don't know. I've done so much. <laughs> Your earliest recollection. My earliest recollection. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. See, I've just been I've been doing music so long. Mm-hmm. I think I, my earliest recollection would be taking up offering at Tent Revival. Yeah, maybe for the first thing. Actually, yeah, yeah for like that's a different ministry, but yeah, yeah, yeah. that would be yeah, setting up chairs at Tent Revivals. Yeah, that, packing chairs at Tent Revivals, packing chairs in church, mm-hmm. packing but chairs. Then other than that, I think just helping clean. <laughs> yeah, helping, helping clean. clean. Yep. On to assisting in Sunday school, yeah. to teaching, to on, on, on. Yep. <laughs> Everything else. Et cetera. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Jed? I was an usher at your dad's church. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I had a little shark tie clip. I was so proud of it. That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> Over you. <sighs> I, I was, it, when we it. started, <laughs> when we started the church, I was in, uh, Going, what year was that, Billy? I was going into seventh or eighth grade. Mm. Well, what year was it? Um, that I don't know, Jed. <laughs> Crazy. Well, okay. So I started high school. I graduated in 2009. So I started high school probably in 2004. So it would have been 2000, 2003. Mm. Does that sound right? That's been like 20 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> 20 <clears throat> years ago. <laughs> I think I was around 10. So when Billy I, can say he, he's he been working in church for 20 years now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. Man. What a testimony. <laughs> what a bastion of the work of God. <laughs> <laughs> and with that being said, <laughs> we will see you a little further down the road. Thanks for tuning in. You can listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. If you'd like to watch us, you can find us on the road home on YouTube. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Uh, You can check us out on Instagram at the road home underscore podcast. If you'd like to email us, you can email us at the road home podcast at yahoo.com. Thank you.